Hi there, welcome. I hope you're staying in so that lives can be saved. In today's tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to make this cool flyer, which you can use as a reminder when you go live. You can use it as a church and you can use it if you have um, a live video events that you host either on Facebook or on YouTube or even Instagram. So if you're ready, let's begin. We're going to use a basic image. I'm going to go to my adjustment layers and I'm going to choose solid color. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to change the color to red. I'm going to go for a deeper red something like this. And I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to change the opacity. I'm going to take it down just a little. So you can still see the subject. But so I'm going to leave it like this. And I'm going to add another layer. I'm going to use the gradient adjustment effect. So I'm going to click on gradient. And I'm going to go to the color. I'm going to click on gradient. And I'm going to double click on the stop change the color. I'm going to choose um, a darker blue, almost close to a black. And then I'm going to press OK on this. So th the last thing I'm going to do before we start putting in our text is I'm going to add another layer. I'm going to click and add a new layer. And I'm going to name this black. And I'm going to use my bucket. I'm going to paint that in, making sure I'm on the right layer. I'm going to paint that in. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to change the opacity. I'm going to take it down to, let's say, about a 73, thereabout. And then I'm going to pick my eraser tool. I'm going to increase my brush head. And now I'm just going to gently erase from the top so I can still see my subject, but the bottom is much more darker. So with this set for us, I'm now going to select my text tool and I'm going to start typing in my text. So I'm going to type in my larger text first. I'm going to highlight and I'm going to change the font style. I'm going to make it bold. I like the way it looks. So I'm just going to go on and add the rest of the text. So I'm going to add, um, I'm going to change the font size here. So it's readable as I type in. So streaming is my next word. I'm going to bring it down here. And I'm going to press Control T to transform it. And I'm just going to hold down my shift and I'm going to scale that, something like that. And I'm going to double click to release. I'm going to move it down like that. And I'm going to press Control T and I'm just going to scale it down just a little. I'm going to draw in a background, a white background, a black background. And I'm going to create a new layer. And I'm going to use my paint bucket with my foreground as black. I'm going to select my paint bucket and I'm going to paint that in. And I'm going to press Control D to deselect it. And I'm going to type in another text. And I'm just going to move that with my move tool. I'm going to set it right there. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to select everything that I've typed in so far, and I'm just going to move it down. And I'm sure you're wondering how I did that. So you select the first layer, you hold down your shift, and then select the last layer. If it's in the same order, you can do that. But if it's not, you will have to, let's say, I want to select faith and stream. So I'll hold down my control and that will allow you to choose different layers 
even though they are not in the same order, okay? So that's just a little tip that you can use. So we have a few more elements to add. So I'm going to bring in my brush stroke. You can get it online, just type in brush stroke and you will have different images or you can create your own using your brush but I prefer to pick something online. So I'm going to use my move tool and I'm going to drag it, holding it down. I'm going to release so it shows up. And now because it's black, you can see it. So I'm going to go to image and I'm going to choose adjustment and choose inverse. So inverse will change anything that you have from black to white. If you have it in color, it will change it to the opposite of that color based on the color range. So I'm just going to move this, set it somewhere here. I'm going to press Control T and I'm going to scale it. And I'm going to move it up. I'm going to double click to release it. Now I'm just going to put in my text. I'm just going to type in tune in on Zoom. I'm going to select and change the font and also change the font size. I'm going to make sure it's black and I'm going to move it and set it right there. I'm going to press Ctrl T to transform my selection or activate it so that way I can scale it. So there are multiple ways of scaling. I can do it manually or you can go to the top. Once you have your text highlighted, you can go up here and change your font size. If it's too small, you can type it in by highlighting whatever is there and type in whatever size you want. Or you can also go to your character and you can change your font here. You can also change your spacing here as well as your spacing vertical. And this is horizontal spacing. So you have so many options available to you when it comes to resizing your text or your spacing. I hope this also adds to the second tip or the first tip I gave you earlier. Okay, so moving along, we just need to add our logo and we are done. So I'm gonna bring in the Zoom logo and I'm just going to drag that in. I'm gonna right click and then choose that layer. And then I'm just going to drag and release and then move it down. If you want to scale it, you can do that. So what I'm going to do, I want to scale down the entire, I'm going to press Control T to activate all my selection. And I'm just going to hold one end and just scale it. And I'm going to double click to release it. I'm going to center it, right click, and I'm going to move my logo down just a little. And I'm also going to move my zoom text and my brush stroke down a little. If you want to have a more linear flyer, what you can do is you can use your crop tool and you can just crop and rescale your canvas just like that. And you can double click and that will crop it for you. And sometimes if you want to actually enlarge your canvas, you do the same thing. So you click on your crop tool and this time you open it up. And of course, when you open it up, you will have to fill it in. But that is another trick, which is tip three that I've given you in the same flyer. I hope you're taking notes. All right, so with this, we are basically done. One thing that I like to do to complete my flyer or any project I do is that I create one single file. And once I have that single file, 
I can go back into that file and then play with the different effects that the camera raw filter gives me so I can enrich my final design. So let me show you how you do that. What you want to do is you want to select all your layers and group it. And this is the group icon right on the bottom. You click it and it groups everything for you. And what you want to now do is press down your Shift, Alt, Control, and E at the same time, and it will generate a final image. So as you can see, if I turn off the group, which has all the layers, I still have a final image. So with this final image, what you want to do is you want to go to filter and you want to go to camera raw filter. Okay. So Photoshop will open up another window for you and you will be able to just add a few touches to your final image. So what I want to do is to enrich my background. So I'm going to go for the vibrant and I'm just going to move it. So as you can see, the red begins to pop a little bit more. I'm going to also increase my saturation. I'm going to take back my, my vibrant so it goes back a little. And then what I want to do as my contrast, I'm just going to play around with that as well. So you can see that there's a dramatic change that is happening just with this effect. And uh, I think I'm happy with what I have. I want to see if I want to do anything with the blacks. I'm going to leave it like that. The clarity is good. My contrast is also good. Uh, shadow won't do much for me. So I'm going to click OK. And now I'm going to show you the before and after. So watch the difference. So this, this is the before and this is the after. So you can see that there is a dramatic change just by using the camera raw filter. I hope you found this tutorial very easy to learn and follow. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and also turn on the notification bell for all future uploads. And please stay home so lives can be saved. See you next time. Bye-bye.